Congress President Sri Rahul Ji, respected former Congress President Srimati Sonia Gandhi Ji, former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh Ji, Sri Anthony Ji, Sri Venugopal Ji, Sri Randeep Surjewala Ji, my colleague Professor Rajiv Gowda, my colleagues in the party, friends, friends from the media. The manifesto will be released in a few minutes and you will have a copy in your hands. The manifesto was made through a process which has been described by my colleague Sri Rajiv Gowda. The content the contents of the manifesto, in my view, are the millions of voices that we heard during these consultations. If there is a paragraph in the manifesto, that paragraph was actually spoken or written by a citizen or a group of citizens in this country. They spoke much more they wrote to us much more, but we could not accommodate all those voices, all those writings, given the limitations of the size of the manifesto. When this manifesto is released and when the contents are known, you will find that there is enough in the manifesto which addresses the concerns of our farmers, youth, women, Dalits, minorities, industry, small and medium enterprises, those who are concerned with the state of our education, those who are concerned with the state of our health care, workers, workers in the unorganized sector, concerns about internal security, concerns about national security, foreign policy, the northeastern states, Jammu and Kashmir. There is so much, so much more could have been said, but I'm sorry, given the limitations of the manifesto, we could only say so much. But I'm sure when our party workers and our party leaders take the message forward across the length and breadth of this country, they will find resonance to what we have said. The idea is to set the narrative for 2019. I think the Congress President has already set the narrative. The BJP, which is our opposition, they may be the ruling party today, they may call us the opposition, but the BJP is our opposition. That party is trying to seize the narrative that party is trying to take the narrative back to the old, what they tried five years ago, the narrative of polarization, divisiveness, and hyper-nationalism. We have to bring the narrative to the real issues faced by the people. And the real issues are, as every survey, every research will tell us, the real issues are, number one is unemployment. Four crore, 70 lakh jobs were lost, not the two crore jobs every year that the Prime Minister promised. Four crore, 70 jobs, jobs were lost. The second issue is farmers' distress. Farmers' loan burden has increased year after year after year. And according to a Nabad report, the average Indian farmer has a loan burden of a lakh and four thousand rupees. One lakh four thousand rupees. The third is women. And when we ask women in Mumbai, what is your prime concern? I thought they will say price rise. But what they said was our security. Women are afraid of their security of their children's security, of the security of their homes. These are the top three issues. Unemployment, farmers' distress, 
and women's security. There are many other issues. These thread that binds all the sections of the manifesto is simply in two words, wealth and welfare. The manifesto, when implemented by a Congress government, I assure you, we will create wealth and we will guarantee welfare. The theme of the manifesto is how do you merge or how do you marry wealth and welfare. The goal of the manifesto is to announce a plan to the people of India where we will create wealth and we will guarantee welfare. And that I'm sure a Congress government